Welcome to the Comlex 5 minute review. Visit comlexflashcards.com for more information on how to prepare for the Comlex board exam. Now, let's talk about sinus sick syndrome. This is um, also called non-thyroidal illness. Uh, in this condition, there are TFT abnormalities in patients with severe non-thyroidal illnesses. Therefore, in acute illness, you want to check TFTs only if there's an increased concern for thyroid disease. Um, you may have acute um, acquired transient central hypothyroidism in these cases, and if the thyroid dysfunction is suspected in critically ill patients, TSH alone is not reliable, and so you have to measure all the TFTs. Also, replacement thyroxine is not helpful or recommended for critically ill patients unless there's definite symptoms of hypothyroidism, okay? And in terms of, you know, looking at definite symptoms for hypothyroidism, you're looking at things like weakness, fatigue, arthralgia, myalgias, headache, depression, cold intolerance, weight gain, constipation, dry skin, um, brittle nails, carpal tunnel syndrome, delayed uh, deep tendon reflexes, diastolic hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and in the late stages you can see slow speech, hoarseness, um, loss of outer third of eyebrows, myxedema possibly, periorbital puffiness, bradycardia, um, pericard pericardial and peritoneal effusions, and also atherosclerosis. In this condition, sick euthyroid syndrome, if thyroid dysfunction is suspected in critically ill patients, again, you have to get the T4, free T4, and the T3. In mild illnesses, there's a decrease in T4, okay, which leads to a T3 conversion. Um, there's increased re reverse T3, which leads to a decrease in T3. And in severe illnesses, you have decreased TBG, and albumin, which results in an increased reverse T3 and a very decreased T3 level, okay? There's also increased degradation of T4 um, and there's central um, decrease in TSH. So the net result of all this is a decrease in T3, decrease in T4, decrease in free T4, and a decrease in TSH. In the recovery phase though, you have an increase in TSH followed by recovery of T4 and then T3, okay? Um, and in terms of replacement thyroxine, as we said, it's not recommended, um, but you know, only for critically ill patients with decreased T3 and T4, um, and they had definite signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism. So that's an overview of sick thyroid sim uh, syndrome. And on the board exam, look for a patient with an illness. Remember that you want to get all the um, TFTs, not just the TSH alone, okay? Uh, remember that all the values are decreased uh, because of conversion um, from the mild illness and in the severe illness and that replacement thyroxine is not that beneficial unless the patient has definite signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism. Next topic I want to talk about is amiodarone and thyroid disease. Amiodarone is, um, you know, causes both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, okay? There's a risk of thyroid dysfunction uh, which is lower with lower doses and um, you want to check TSH prior to therapy at four month intervals on amiodarone and for one year after if um, amiodarone related um, side effects are experienced. Now in terms of the hypothyroidism which occurs in 10% uh, and more common in iodine replete areas there's the wolf Chaikoff effect. What is this? This is basically an iodine load which decreases iodine uptake leading to organification and release of T4 and T3. It inhibits conversion of T4 to T3 and there's direct immune mediated thyroid destruction. Okay, so the net result of all this is there's an inhibition of T4 to T3 conversion. Okay, the iodine load decreases iodine uptake organification and as a result there is um, a decreased release of T4 and T3. So that's what causes the hypothyroidism. You have less release of T4 and T3. T4 is not being converted into T3. And there's also 
immune-mediated thyroid destruction. All of these three things can cause hypothyroidism. In normal individuals, there's decreased T4, and then an escape wolf Chaikoff effect occurs, and they have again an increased T4, decreased T3, and increased uh, TSH. And then after a while, in one to three months, the TSH level will normalize, okay? And in susceptible individuals, such as patients with subclinical Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where you would see the um, positive um, antibody test in order to make sure that they have that, the anti-thyroid peroxidase um, antibody, they may not have these escape effects, okay? And to treat this, usually thyroxine is given to normalize the TSH, um, and you may need a larger than the usual dose, okay? So that's uh, basically the hypothyroidism and amiodarone. Now let's talk about hyperthyroidism. There's two types. Type 1 is an underlying multinodular goiter or an autonomous thyroid tissue. Um, there's something called the jade bayes dow effect, okay? And this is, um, oops, this is uh, mainly where there is an iodine load which causes an increased synthesis of T4 and T3 in the tissue. In T type 2, um, there's destructive thyroiditis, okay? So there's an increased release of preformed T4 and T3 leading to hyperthyroidism and then hypothyroidism and finally recovery. For type 1, uh, there's increased thyroid blood flow on Doppler ultrasound and the treatment is methimazole. For type 2, there's an increased ESR, decreased flow on Doppler and the treatment is steroids. Type 1 versus type 2 often are difficult to distinguish um, and they have um, and sometimes physicians prefer to start treatment for both, okay? So in type 1, it's mainly an underlying multinodular goiter, um, and there's autonomous thyroid tissue secretion through the jade Bosdow effect, which causes an iodine load, which in turn increases the synthesis of T4 and T3. So that's an overview of hyperthyroidism from effects of amiodarone. Again, this only happens in 3% of patients on amiodarone um, and 10 to 20% of patients in uh, iodine deficient areas. Really quick, let's talk about uh, thyroid nodules, although this is a talk um, on its own, but you know, just some key points. There's no difference in incidence of thyroid carcinoma between thyroids with single or multiple nodules. And you want to perform a FNA slash biopsy on all cold or non-specific thyroid nodules greater than one centimeter. Here's our references, and again, please visit comlexflashcards.com for complete information on how to prepare for the Comlex board exam, and good luck in your preparation.